All right, guys, so what I want to talk about in this video is once you've started playing with Golden Cheetah, you've got it installed, maybe you've imported some rides, um, what you can find pretty quickly is it's not clear how you should actually use this software in order to look at your rides, find out um, if they're doing what you want them to be doing as far as your training and all that, and basically just to get the most out of it. So you can see there's lots of options, and these are not even all of them. So what I want to talk about is just the most important uh, three or four things you should be doing after each ride. So uh, one thing that I think is just sort of fun is, so let's say you've already imported your rise, you go activity, import from files, select it from your Garmin or whatever. So I'm going to look at a group right here. So something that's uh, fun to do is to go to your CP, your critical power one. So if you're not familiar with it, real quickly, CP, you've got this uh, blue curve going along here, the bumpy one, and that just shows the best power you've put out at different time ranges. So everything from one second up to, I assume, whatever your longest ride has been. So for example, for me, if we look at my five second power, my best ever five second power is 1041 watts, and you can see when you did it. So by default, this thing uh, picks a certain range, I believe six months, but if you go to all chart settings, you can tell it what you want it to pick. Do you just want to look at uh, recent ones, or do you want to look at a whole bunch of time frames? Okay, so a nice thing with that is you can quickly see your red curve is the ride you just selected, so I've selected my group ride. And lately I've been working on my one, two minute power, that kind of range. And I see here that my red curve, I set a best everywhere from roughly a minute and a half to about three minutes or so. So that shows that uh, that training I've been doing has been working and it showed up on this ride. And I sort of put out decent power compared to my best in some of the longer ranges. Okay, so that's just sort of fun to see how, how it worked. So let's say you've imported a ride um, and you look at your critical power and you say great I can see where I how I did the next thing you want to do is you want to look at individual uh, parts of the ride so here's a sweet spot ride that I imported but when I was riding I forgot to hit like the lap button on my garments so I don't have any intervals it's just one giant ride right just one big old power file which isn't very helpful to me so the first thing you want to do is throw in some intervals so what you can do is go up here and click this little stopwatch button and that will find intervals for you. So you have several ways you can find intervals. One is peak power, so you can just click find to test it. And it will find your best 5 second power, 10 second, all the way up to an hour. And you can pick which ones you want. For example, this is a sweet spot ride, so I wasn't sprinting or anything, so I don't really need any of these short ones. So you could click the ones you want and then add them to your ride. And there you go, now you've got some intervals. So another way you can do it is ascent. So this is really nice for things like if you're doing a ride with a lot of hills, maybe you're doing hill repeats, you can tell it, I only want you to count a hill as being 100 meters of vertical ascent or whatever you want to change that to, and then find all of them that match that criteria. Um, w prime, you can just, we'll talk more about W prime later, but you can think of it as you've expended some amount of energy. You can expend that uh, real short, like in a sprint, or you can expend it over a long time, like a longer interval. So for example, this is asking for two kilojoules, let's put something smaller, one kilojoule. So here's different places I burned over one kilojoule on the thing. So let's look at the last one here, which is time and distance, which is exactly what you think it would be. I want you to find all the one minute, my best one minute, and I want you to find five of them, say. So it puts them in there. I don't necessarily think it finds the best five, it just finds five. And you can add those to the right if you want. So I don't really care about these, so I'm going to shift click all these guys and get rid of them. So let's look at one uh, that I did recently and how we can actually use it. So. If I go back here, yesterday or the other day, I did some um, some eight-minute intervals. I did four of them, and I found my intervals, or maybe you did them through your Garmin. So what I want to check is how do those things, how do those four intervals compare? So the simplest way is just to click on the first one, and then you get this little uh, information down here. So my normalized power is 241 watts. My second one was 231, uh, 228, 224. Okay, that's okay, but especially something like eight minutes long, I kind of want to know how well am I holding my power, how well is this working. So what you want to do is um, go up here to toggle compare pane, if you don't already have a compare pane on, and shift click your intervals and just drag them down there. 
Now, it's a little tricky because right now nothing's happened. And for example, if you go to ride, you'll see it's highlighted the intervals, but nothing more. So what you need to do is click the off button. What actually they're saying is compare is off, so click it to turn it on. Okay, so now it's laying over my four intervals, so I can see a little bit, see heart rate, all these sorts of things. The problem is, especially if you're worried about powers, this vertical axis is way too squished. So, you know, 200 to 300, there's a 100 watt range in like a centimeter here. That's not enough for me to really look at it carefully. So the better place to look at, at least for the power, is to click on CP. So remember before, CP was this whole giant curve, but if you turn on the compare pane, then it gives you a nice, much more uh, compact or a much more you know, detail-filled uh, version of this. So I can, you can look at them a couple different ways. I think the easiest is just to look at the color here. So my pink one was my first one. So my pink one, it looks like I had the very best pacing on. I probably even need to work on not having the pacing drop. And then my later ones, I started too hard. So immediately I can see, all right, that's something I need to be careful about is starting too hard there. And then, if, for example, if I want to compare my first one to my last one, my last one's red, I can see that I did start too hard, but then what happened was, right, uh, once I dropped down below my first attempt, here's pink, here's red, I never could quite get my watts back up. So maybe if I would have started better, I could have done better. So that's a way you can a little better compare um, what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and clear all those, turn it off, and then I'm just going to hide the pane so I can see better. So you can also see, right, if you just got the interval selected, you can just select one of them, or you can select all four of them. You can also view it on here, how it compares to your historical bests. Okay, so the next thing, what I think is really the most important one, especially if you're training, if you're doing some sort of ride that's training for a race, or if you're doing a race. Um, so let me look at, let me pick one in the early season and compare that to a, a more recent one. So here was a, um, here was a group ride that I did that, uh, was sort of a good preparation for a race. Let me pick a little different one. That one's not very good preparation for a race. <laughs> so, right. So here's one that was a good preparation for a race. So what I want to see is, was I prepared enough for this ride? And so by extension, was I prepared enough for the race that I'm preparing for? And the best thing to look at is the stress tab up here. So the stress tab has a whole bunch of stuff going on. So if you ever look at a chart in Golden Cheetah and it has too much stuff and you can't read it, what you can do is you can hover over the things on the side. So watts, so that's just showing my watts. And in the background, I've got the shading for my zone, zone one, two, three, four, five, all the way up. Uh, I also asked it to include uh, the elevation charts and I can see the, help me figure out where everything is. W prime balance is this line in red, so we'll talk about that in a second here. And then training impact stress score, that's just essentially um, how much uh, impact did the training have, how much power did you put out cumulatively over the whole ride. So this W prime is really the most important one. So to talk about W prime, first we have to go back to our critical power chart. So you can see up here, it estimates what it thinks your critical power is. Essentially all critical power is, it's related to FTP, it's just they try to fit a nice smooth curve to your critical power and then they basically say well you know here it kind of flattens out and then eventually it gets these long rides you probably don't do very often so it really is going to drop down so they say what if instead we just let this sort of continue straight out so if you follow my cursor there if we just let the line continue straight how many watts would that be and apparently that's about 223 watts according to their model so the idea is that Critical power is a power you should be able to write at basically forever. You know, if you're eating Cliff Bars and you're drinking, you should be able to write that as long as you want. Yeah, it's going to be hard, but you can do it. So the idea then is if you're below critical power, so for me, if I'm below 223 watts, I should be able to essentially write at that power forever. If I'm, and another way to think of that, right, is that you're recovering. You're doing less than your forever power. On the other hand, if you're above critical power, if I'm putting out, say, four, five, six hundred watts, I only have a limited amount of power. So what you should think is there's a horizontal line drawn at your critical power, so for me, 223 watts. And then what you want to do is look at everything above that. 
So if you took a calculus class, you can think, right, you integrate this curve um, from the curve on top to this critical power line at the bottom. And there's some finite amount of energy in there. And that energy is W prime. So W prime is just how much energy measured in kilojoules is in everything from the critical power per curve to this line, your CP, whatever it estimates for you. So the idea is that when you're writing, if you're writing above your critical power, you're using up some of this. You can think of this like your gas tank. So I think the right way to sort of think about it is like being a hybrid car, right? So when you go fast, you're using up your gas. But when you go slow or when you're braking or something, right, it uses electricity, something that can go a lot longer, um, and it'll even like regenerate your power right through braking like in a Prius or whatever. So that's the W prime as you can think of like your gas tank. So if we go back to the stress tab, what this red line is, is this is showing how much W prime you have left, how much gas you have left in the tank. So remember, the CP estimated my W prime was roughly 20 kilojoules. And you can see here my W prime starts at 20, so that's in kilojoules. So I start with the full gas tank. Um, we're writing, I use up some, and then probably what happens is, you know, like I was pooling here, and then at this point I got in the back of the peloton and I just got to easily, you know, sit on. So I got to recover some. And so this keeps happening over and over and over again. I work, I recover, I work, I recover. So we can see right here is zero uh, kilojoules balance. The gas tank is zero. Now we see really it's dropping below zero, but the thing is that, you know, Golden Cheetah isn't perfect in how it estimates any of this. So as you ride more, it'll get better estimates. So what I can see, though, is that um, fairly quickly into the ride, I got down to about zero uh, kilojoules, zero gas in the tank. And luckily, I was able to recover some, but um, eventually I dropped way down here. And I remember actually at this point, I got dropped on the ride. And then I just sort of gave up and I had a, long, a lot of recovery riding back home. So what I can see from this ride is that um, I was not yet ready. I didn't have enough power for this ride because the whole ride, I'm just trending downward, downward, downward. Even when I recover, I still end up going downward. So that says I wasn't quite ready. So that means that if you took the amount of power above my critical power, I didn't have enough up here. So I need to push this whole blue curve up in order to have more W prime. So let's look at a more recent one that I did. So here is a long group ride I did. Let's look at the stress now. So I rode on my own for a little while before the group ride to get some more miles. Let me just highlight the W prime. And then we had a super hard effort right at the start here, but still I'm above zero. And then I got a nice recovery. And then after that, it was a really hard ride. I remember that day. But the good thing is I stayed above zero the whole time. And you can see, even once I got down, I didn't continue to trend downward. I stayed flat or even a little bit up. So that tells me that, okay, now I'm better prepared. And in fact, I still need to work more because this is preparing for a long road race I'm going to do. But I can see I'm already sort of heading the right direction. So another thing you can do is you can sort of see what's causing these big drops in your W prime balance. So if I go to my, I had already added my intervals like I did up here. If I go along, I can see, so right there, see my five minute, inter, my best five minute power, that is when my W prime really dropped hard the first time. So that tells me that maybe if I worked on my five minute power, um, it wouldn't have dropped so far. And this one over here too, so let's find that. I believe that's my, yep, there's my roughly two minute power. Again, it plummeted. Whereas if I look at something like my best 20 minute power, um, in fact, in my best 20 minute time, I was actually recovering a little bit, or at least not losing W prime overall. So that tells me that one's probably pretty okay for where I'm at. So this is a really nice tool for analyzing uh, your rides, especially rides that are preparation for races, or you can just put on a race and see how the race looked. So I can see here from my race that besides a little bit of uh, effort near the, sort of the middle, I was really okay. and I was plenty prepared for this guy. I only ended up using W prime at the big hard finish sprint at the end. Okay, so that's a great one you should definitely make use of. So the last thing I'll talk about in detail is the quadrant analysis. So quadrant analysis is basically, um, it's kind of comparing your, uh, the power that you're putting out and your cadence. So here we can see circumferential pedal velocity. You can just think of that, like how fast are you spinning the pedals, right? Power is your cadence times how hard you're pushing down your pedal force. So that gives you power. So this 
curve right here is my FTP. So you can, as I follow along the curve, you can kind of see it staying near roughly 215 watts or so, which is roughly my FTP. And then I believe the crosshair is always cross at your best 20 minute power on your ride. So that's at 92 RPMs and 210 watts or so. So you have the four quadrants. So quadrant one up here, this means you're doing low cadence and high pedal force. So maybe like if you're mashing. So you probably don't really want to be spending much time up here. Quadrant two means you have high cadence and high pedal force, maybe like sprinting. Uh, quadrant three means you have high cadence but low pedal force. Maybe you just like to spin a lot or you're doing cadence work. And quadrant four is low, both of them. Low pedal force, uh, low, low cadence. So that's maybe you're sitting at the back of the peloton or something, just chilling. So one thing is you can kind of just get a view of, um, sorry, I cleared everything there. So you can get a view of what your race was like. So here I see I spent a ton of time spinning pretty fast, but not pushing hard. That's pretty good for me. And I spent sort of a medium amount of time, second most in here, and then a third most maybe in the recovery area, and not much time mashing, so that's good for me. What you can do is you can compare that to your training. So if I look at this, so I spent most of the time in these three quadrants. Let's go to a group ride that I did, so that would be training for it. So let's double check. So here we can see, right, these actually cross at 90 RPMs, whereas the other one crossed at 94, so a little further over. So here it looks like, in fact, I sort of didn't spend as much time in this fourth quadrant as I did on my race. Race a lot of time in the fourth quadrant. Group ride, especially if you scoot the quadrant over to 94, you can see there's not that much. So my group ride wasn't perfectly approximating the race that I'm training for. So maybe when I do my group rides, I need to work on keeping my cadence higher to match those two things. So in my opinion, those um, are the most important tabs, creating intervals, viewing them in the uh, critical power one, looking at the critical power overall, and then really importantly, playing with your stress and seeing how well you're prepared for, um, for what you're trying to do. There's other ones here. Uh, the last one I'll say anything about is the map tabs. This is pretty straightforward. It's a map. But the really nice thing is that uh, what you can do is when you do something like this, like you pull up your intervals, it's not clear where those occurred at. If you go to the map, if you click on it, it will highlight, so you click on a little longer one, 20 minute there, 10 minutes, it highlights where that occurred at. So that's easier than just looking at the ride tab and trying to guess where that is. You can look at the map and just see, okay, that's where my best 20 minute power or 10 minute power occurred at. My best five minute power was actually nowhere near that, that same area. So that gives you a better idea. So there's lots of other tabs you can play with. In my opinion, none of them are super helpful for here, um, but I recommend you try them anyway and see if it's something that's good for you. So if you have any questions or you want me to talk in detail about something more, please let me know. And uh, good luck. I hope this is helpful.